I'm going to talk about ways that you can integrate exercise into your life. Uh, my background, I'm a nerd. I've been a nerd for 35 years. I still spend easily 10 hours a day at my computer, still write software. Uh, I was a pretty decent athlete way, way back in the day. Uh, in my mid, late 30s, I had a back operation. In my 40s, I gained a lot of weight. And I realized I need to find a way to integrate a fitness lifestyle into my life, into my work life. And so little did I know in my late 40s, as I started working on this, that it was going to become super valuable for me in, the, in my 60s. Right before I turned 60, I was diagnosed with uh, high-grade bladder cancer. Uh, it was non-invasive. Uh, I had a golf ball-sized tumor uh, in my bladder. Luckily for me, it grew into the cavity and not through the wall. But I had to go through the, the resection and then the second resection. And then uh, I just had my last treatment, uh, BCG treatment, about two months ago. So I've been through that journey in the last 18 months or so. But what's kind of interesting is during that time, I still stayed competitive in master's track and field. That was something I picked up at 53 and started competing with a, uh, a bunch of other uh, older athletes like myself. And so in this time where I was going through the bladder cancer treatment and continuing to work at my software job, I was still fortunate enough to win five national track and field championships and two world championships in Finland this last summer. And then I set a couple of American records along the way. So uh, I really didn't do anything that taxing, as a matter of fact, as you see, as we go through this, I'll talk about my approach to it was, was really basically pretty simple. And again, it was something I started working on in my late forties because I realized I need to find a way to integrate fitness into my lifestyle. So we can go to the next slide. And really that's the challenge with all our demands of work and then treatment and really life in general, how do we get physically active enough? How do we maintain and increase our level of fitness while we have all these other things that are calling for our time? So if we go to the next slide, there are four things that takeaways that I want everybody here to have, or at least uh, categories or compartments to think about. One is this concept of something we call microburst workouts. The other is the recognition that life is the gym, right? Everywhere we go, we have, it's an opportunity to do something. Then how do we keep our momentum once we build it, you know, this is that time of year where the gyms are packed and in a couple months, the gyms will be pretty empty again. So how do we keep that momentum and enthusiasm going? And so I have a couple tips there for everybody. And then uh, some ways to get started on things. So if we can go to the next slide. So what is a microburst workout? If you look it up online, you'll probably find different definitions. But for me, it's a short one to two minute exercise that I can do throughout the day. And there's a great quote, uh, and this is a professor out of the University of Houston, the one hour a day we spend in the gym does not immunize us for the other 23 sedentary hours of the day. And so when I first read that, I really thought about it. It makes sense, right? At that time, I was going through, you know, going to the gym four or five times a week, an hour or two each time, and yet I still had excessive weight gain. I still had, was going, you know, back operation and all that. So I realized that wasn't my answer. So once I heard that quote and I started doing some more research, this phrase, kids, cats, and cavemen came to me. Look at little kids, right? They get up, they run around, then they lay down for a while. They might get up a little bit later, run around, lay down for a while. Look at cats, some of the arguably the most athletic creatures on this planet. They're sleeping most of the time. But when they get up, they move, they stretch, they jump, right? These are all little microburst workouts. And then through evolution, right, early on, we were wired, cavemen. We couldn't go to the gym for an hour and lay around all day. The saber-toothed tiger would get us. So we, I think just evolution-wise, we're wired for these short workouts to do throughout the day. Now, this is not an anti-gym concept. As a matter of fact, uh, when we first launched this program a while back of getting a number of people to do these resistance, and I use resistance bands, I'll show you that in a bit here, to do these resistance band microburst workouts throughout the day, one of the, the really cool uh, categories of feedback we got is that almost to a person, everybody had more energy than to go be active after work. So again, really easy, doesn't need to be complicated. As a matter of fact, I don't know, Stephanie, if you can open up uh, that link there that says chicken wings and we'll see if it plays a video. If it doesn't, not a big deal. I'm gonna do a new share, that way it can share the audio. Okay, and this is just an example of, uh, and I'll get into the details a little bit more later, just by carrying a simple flat resistance band with you, 
you'd be amazed at the types of exercises you can do. And let's be honest, as we get older, it's not so much about building strength. It's about maintaining mobility, flexibility, you know, and then finding ways and opportunities throughout the day. All right, one of the best things we can do for our shoulders is chicken wings. And we can do these throughout the whole day. Just grab your flat band about shoulder width apart, pinch your elbows into your side, and rotate your hands to the outside. Go light enough so that you can really rotate out. And again, you can just adjust the, where your grip is on the band for resistance, and you're good. That's chicken wings. So as you see, right, simple, super simple. But especially if we sit down a lot all day, right, our shoulders get rounded. You know, there's other ones we do for our hips. There's so many ways of uh, doing things throughout our life where, you know, the life is a gym concept. So if we can go to the Friday next slide. Brand new one called Tomahawk yeah. Ab Crunchers. It's going to seem a little complex, but once you... There you go. Thank you. <laughs> And we'll wait for that next slide to come up. Okay. So what are some of the concepts of being able to do these exercises throughout the day? And so this is what works for me. And I went through a number of things from having free weights in my office to trying yoga in my office. And eventually it came back to the, the resistance bands. And so uh, one, make it convenient. You know, these things are so inexpensive. I actually have resistance bands in my computer bag, in my office. I have them hanging on the stairs as I walk down from my home office down to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee or something. So there's always, you know, opportunities to do a little stretch. And just about any movement that we do, add a little resistance and you'd be amazed at the, the difference it makes for you. Uh, I send reminders to myself on the phone. Right. So four times at work day, I get a little reminder with a quote and I'm just to get up and, and do it to move. Right. Grab my resistance band and move. And then here's something that uh, and I don't want to steal Mark's thunder. We're both uh, masters athletes. Some of for me, having something in the future that I've committed to, whether that's going to a dance with my wife or having a track and field meet that I'm going to go to. Having something I've committed to really helps me stay on point to say, you know what? Yeah, I do need to you know, do these exercises. So I think a, a little tip there, committing to something that's going to require you to be active in the future is a great way to keep motivated in the present. And then the last thing, and this is super, super important, try to identify the personal barriers to integrating fitness into your day. So for me, there were four. And so again, let's go to the next slide. I like to uh, do these at work. And so because I'm at work and I'm a self-professed uh, workaholic, I love what I do. That's why I spend so much time at my computer each day. So I don't want to take a lot of time. I'm not going to go for a half hour walk, even a 15 minute walk. So I need these things to be short. That's why I like the one to two minutes. I don't want to get down on the floor to exercise. So with the resistance bands, there's a lot of stuff you can do even for your core that you can do while you're standing up or seated at your desk. Uh, I don't want to have to change clothes at work. Again, it's time, right? And so you're doing a one to two minute activity. It's an opportunity to get a little exercise in there. You can do it right in your work clothes. And lastly, uh, you know, I don't want to sweat. And I trust me, people who work with me, they don't want me to sweat either. So those are my four personal barriers. And so I had to be honest with myself. What keeps me from sustaining my fitness routine? And it was these four. Once I removed them, it became much easier. So... <clears throat> Now, remove the physical barriers, remove the things that keep you from working out. Uh, how do we maintain that enthusiasm? And so there are a couple uh, tips or things that I've realized over time. One, we can't act consistently in a way that's inconsistent with how we see ourselves. And so, you know, I see it all the time. I'm sure uh, Mark and Matt do as well. N you're trying to use negative self-talk as a motivator. I'm too weak. I'm out of shape, all that. You know, that's a tough way to go. Praise yourself instead for the participating in the process. Yeah, I did four microburst workouts today, or I, I went to the gym today, right? Praise yourself for the process. It's cliche if, if anybody's been around exercise for a while, but it's so true. And then lastly, you know, uh, we need to lighten up. If we, I tell people all the time, if you stop, just restart. It's as simple as that. And then consciously, if you can, uh, acknowledge your boost that you get when you get that feel good, right? You get the dopamine or the, endorph the endorphins after our exercise, Consciously acknowledge those. That'll help you retain that, that feeling. So uh, some things that come up quite a bit, how long should you work out? Well, these are just a couple tips that, that 
I have that have worked for me for years. Uh, I always leave when I feel like I could do more. Keeps you wanting to come back, right? So especially when you get to a certain age or especially if you're going through treatments, exhaustion is not a good thing. As a matter of fact, when I was diagnosed, I reached out to a doctor uh, at a sort of a holistic practice in uh, Arizona just to talk to him. And he told me working out was fine. He said, don't try to lose too much weight and don't become uh, oxygen deprived and don't get exhausted. So I thought that was you know, pretty good advice. And it also is good advice to keep us coming back to the gym or coming back to our workout. And then lastly, what about those days where we're tired? Some of my best workouts have been where at the end of the day where I feel a little lethargic. On those days, I might just be brain dead and body tired because I haven't done much. So the way I tell if I'm actually physically tired and need recovery, or if it's just low energy at the time that might pick up, is if it does, within a couple of minutes of my warm up, if my energy picks up, that's great. I was probably just you know, a little lethargic. But if I'm still tired, then that's my sign that I just, you know, to stop and take a rest day. So golden rule, and I'm sure the others will agree with me on this, much easier to come back from a workout that was too light than it is from an injury or illness from overdoing it. And I only bring this up because a lot of times when people haven't exercised in a while, or even if they're new, it's so easy to overdo it because you don't feel so sore when you're working out, but the next couple of days afterwards, you will feel it. So much easier to come back from doing too little than doing too much. And then getting started. So I'm just really, I'm just gonna reiterate some things here. Uh, keep in mind, it just takes a couple minutes, right? Going to get that coffee, have that resistance band, you know, do something with it. Uh, you can, with resistance bands, you can control the intensity. That's what's great about them, right? It's not unlike a free weight where it's a set weight, where you start that resistance band, where you hold it, how fast you move it, you're in control of how much resistance you have. Uh, avoid the negative self, you know, image motivation, acknowledge the positive mood. And again, super, super important, lighten up and have fun. This is just an example of uh, when we send these, when I get these text reminders, here's the types of exercises I have. It won't mean much to anybody, but to, uh, sort of recap it. I focus on shoulder hip mobility in the morning. Then I might move this posture. There's a lot of yoga moves in the mid morning. Afternoon, there might be some strength. And end of the day is more fun, you know, aerobic type stuff, maybe a little bit. Some butterflies and bee stings, for example, is like a boxing move holding resistance bands. So you can see by the names here, you know, I try to make it fun, keeps you interested. And then you just do the one to two minutes throughout the day. So this, if you want to go next slide, this particular workout is up on a uh, website called microburstworkout.com uh, and BCAN uh, is the password. So if anybody wants to go out there and look at that, uh, I'm, I think there might be a typo here. I don't think you need the wow at the end of it. So that's, that's my, my uh, journey with having bladder cancer and exercising through cancer and the treatments and, and how to keep it fun and interesting and short, and also how it coexisted with that treatment uh, program that I had. So I thank everybody for the time. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Mark.